This isn't a video that I wanted to make, but we've got to talk about Tesla's sales numbers because they're really bad. Hello again, YouTube, and welcome back to Just Get a Tesla. Although the numbers show that quite a lot of people aren't just getting a Tesla, they're buying something else. So there's been an awful lot of news over the last week as we've crossed from 2025 into 2026 and you start getting provisional sales data and things coming out. So all of the numbers that we're going to talk about are provisional at this stage. But broadly, we have got the pattern and the pattern really isn't good for Tesla. So what I'm going to do is talk about what the numbers are, why they're bad and what Tesla can do to fix it. The numbers, and this is the really unpretty bit, Tesla sales in 2025 were down 9%. That is not good, especially in a global market where EV sales were up by 20%, at least 20%. Again, numbers are provisional. And remember that Elon Musk in the quarter three earnings call in 2024 confidently predicted that the sales number in 2025 would be at least 20 to 30% growth. His claim not remotely come to pass. And we should look at how this breaks down into various different markets. So again, we've got provisional data now from a variety of different markets across Europe. Germany down 59%, France down 63%, UK we think is flat-ish, might be a couple of percent up, couple of percent down, but actually the UK has been pretty good. Sweden minus 70%, Norway record highs, right? They've absolutely smashed it out of the park in Norway. Spain, Tesla sales are down 44%, Netherlands they're down 50%, Portugal they're down 22%, Belgium 53%, Italy 18%, Switzerland 20%. 28%. It's an absolute cavalcade of enormous drops in sales. And various excuses have been made. Well, it's because the Model Y was off sale and, and whatever else. Now, look, back in the spring, where there was an obvious month on month gap. So, back in the spring, when the Model Y wasn't on sale for a couple of months, even I was defending the data and saying, hang on, stop, calm down. They're not like for like because you're not comparing sales of the same vehicles. Well, once you annualize it, it actually is comparable. China, minus 7%, Tesla, minus 7%. And that is despite the Model Y L being a China exclusive model. And again, this is a global market growing at at least 20%. And we know that this is just Tesla because we've got data from some other manufacturers. Again, all of this is provisional, but BYD are reporting sales growth of 28%. That puts them into first place. Tesla are no longer the world's biggest EV manufacturer. It's now BYD. In third place is Geely Group, who own things like Volvo and Polestar and Zika. They have seen sales of 100%, 100%. Admittedly from a smaller base, but at that rate of growth, they're coming hard after the likes of Tesla. We've got 39% growth from Volkswagen Group. And I'm one of the people who criticizes VW for all of their missteps, but they've turned something around. And people have said to me, hey, the ID3, all the software has been fixed. Must have been because they're up 39%. BMW up 15%. And then there are guesses. So again, all of the numbers are provisional at this stage. And we don't have verifiable, even provisional numbers for people like Ford or Stellantis. We just don't have anything. But some very simple principles here. As somebody who has been a sales manager of various levels of seniority for nearly 30 years, the number is the number, okay? Statistics, sales data, performance. You might not like it, but the number remains the number, whether it's causing you a problem or not. So I dislike these numbers, but the number is the number. And this decline, this decline is bad. Really, really, really bad for Tesla. Here's why, and then as I say, we're gonna move on to what they can do about it. Look, selling is easy, okay? Selling is easy. It isn't rocket science. 
the industry that I work in puts all kinds of rocket science things into it, but it's not rocket science. Selling is very straightforward. It's having a product that people want to buy at a price they want to pay in a place that's available to them to buy it. That's it. I want to buy this, I can afford to buy this, and I can access it. That's all it is, whatever the product is. So it's gotta be something that people want to buy and it's got to be a price that they are willing to pay. And it's not about cheap, it's about affordable. It's actually about value, right? Things that are more expensive can be great value if you get them loaded up with stuff. I would say Tesla are fantastic value when you actually look at the features that come with the car, fantastic value. And of course, it's got to be available to you to buy. Tesla is now available in large parts of the world. So I think they've got that one sorted. If sales are down, why have we seen on social media over this weekend, people making all kinds of mad excuses for the drop? The best one that I saw was them saying, well, we beat Rivian. I don't care about Rivian. Rivian aren't a global manufacturer. They're a niche manufacturer in the US. It's like saying, oh, Cybertruck has beaten the F-150 Lightning. No one's buying it, but it's beaten something else that no one's buying, so that makes it okay, does it? No, it's not selling. It's a real problem. The other mad take that I've seen is one that says, vehicle sales do not matter. Vehicle sales for a car manufacturer do not matter. And this is the really mad thing about it. The very same people saying that vehicle sales do not matter a week ago were retweeting Elon's baseless claim that the Model Y is the best selling car in the world in 2025 and saying that vehicle sales do matter. So they're saying they do matter when Elon says they're good and they don't matter when the stats prove that they're bad. I'm sorry, but that's just basic hypocrisy, okay? Again, the number is the number. You might not like it, I certainly don't like it, but it is what it is. So. Let's talk about what's going on here. Tesla, as I said earlier, are a car company, and that is heresy to some people, heresy. Tesla are not a car company, Ian. They're an autonomy manufacturer. They're selling automation, they're selling the future. Well, not at the moment, they're not. And every single car that Tesla sell, they make a nice fat profit, which is why they've got so much cash. So Tesla need to sell vehicles to generate the cash profit, to reinvest into all of the other things that you think Tesla are doing instead, okay? You have to sell the product to be able to invest into all of the other things. It's called capitalism, okay? Uh, why do I have to actually sit here and explain some of this, okay? so. The number one thing that people talk about endlessly within the social media community, which is Tesla advocates such as myself, is that FSD is the future, full self-driving, autonomy. I see posts with people saying, why do cars have steering wheels in 2026? Well, I'll tell you why. And again, the number is the number, whether it agrees with you or not. And here is the number. On Tesla's quarter three earnings call last year, they said that the take-up rate of FSD is 12%. One eighth of their vehicles run FSD, that's it. So they're selling vehicles and seven eighths of them do not have FSD. Now there's a number of reasons for that. That includes all Teslas, but as people keep pointing out to me, hey Ian, America is half of our sales, fine. So for half of the world, you might not be able to get FSD. So you can have it in Australia if you've got a hardware four car and New Zealand. You can have a version of it in China if you've got a hardware four car. If you're on hardware three, tough titty, you're getting nothing. If you're in Europe, if you're in the Americas, if you're in Japan, if you're in a whole load of places, nada, nothing. So people can't have FSD. But what about the people who can have FSD? Because again, if the take-up isn't there, then how can people try and claim that FSD is the future direction for the company? Now, the data that we've got is still something that people argue about. But in 2024, there was a trial done in America. They gave everybody a free trial of FSD. And according to the financial analysts, the take-up rate 
after the trial of people purchasing or subscribing to FSD was 2%. 2%. People tried FSD and 98% said no thank you. Now, Elon has gone out there and said that number is a load of nonsense. But remember, Elon also said that 2025's growth will be 20 to 30%. So Elon says lots of things. But let's take Elon at face value on this one. Let's be really kind and generous and say that 2% is an undercall. I am going to quintuple that number to 10% take up. Actually, no, I'll double that again. 20% take up. Let's assume it's an undercall by a factor of 10 and it gets to a take up rate of 20% after a trial. Is that it? Is that it? Is that really all it is? The demand that people endlessly shout about FSD is the future. I'm in the conclusion of, well, look, if the future is autonomy, then why does nobody seem to want it? If the future is your car driving you about and you not doing anything, why aren't people buying it? The number is the number. It might disagree with what some people think. It might disagree with their personal view. And look, I'm first in the queue to buy FSD when it's available here in the UK. Believe me, I am on it on day one that it's available in this car. So I'm a customer, an expectant customer, but I'm not daft enough to think that what I think is necessarily what the rest of you think. And the number is the number. People do not want autonomy at the moment. That might change. But how is it going to change? Well, you start getting into edge products and don't even get me started on the cyber cap, okay? Because I keep reading all of this stuff about vehicle sales don't matter because it's now all about the cyber cap. Great, so cyber cap is US only and in the US there is a federal cap, a federal government cap of 2,500 vehicles per manufacturer which are fully autonomous and outside of the uh, regulations. 2,500. Now, Tesla have invented this new unboxed car manufacturing process, which is genius, okay? Just as the giga casting was genius, it completely rethought how you build cars. They've done it again. And this is where Tesla are brilliant, genuinely brilliant. Unboxed means that you build all the components separately and then just basically bolt them together. The last thing that goes on is the body. You build the rest of the car and then stick the body sides on at the end so you've got easy access which makes it easier to build cars and faster and cheaper brilliant idea but the only car the only car they're planning to build with unboxed is the cyber cab and they can only make 2500 of them according to the law and as i'm recording this donald trump is not changing the law he's bombing caracas in venezuela so he's got other things on his mind okay so there is a cap but even where other people have got there first. So Waymo being a perfect example, Waymo were already out there in the market. What's the market share of Waymo in San Francisco? The market where Waymo are visible and out there and people actually go and ride in them as a tourist attraction. Well, their market share is 25%. It's not everything. It's not close to it. 25% in one city. So I, again, I ask the question, where is the demand? Do you know what the demand is? in the market, it's for people buying cars. That is the demand. And it's a demand that Tesla are currently failing to do. And don't even get me started on some of the other dafter things. I mean, Optimus. We've got these various demonstrations where excited Tesla influencers turn up to somewhere where you have basically got a metal puppet, right? Optimus is there handing out drinks or serving popcorn and doing high fives and all the rest of it, but it's teleoperated. It's not real, it's a metal puppet. Apparently, Optimus is going to take over everybody's job, right? All the things that you currently do will now be done by a Tesla Robotatron, okay? You won't earn any money, but you will have universal high income, says Elon, and all of the people who parrot Elon, because the robots are going to build everything you need virtually for free. Convinced? No, neither am I. It's just nonsense, okay? Tesla at the moment is a car company and even if you believe in all of the mad things like Robototron and Cybercar you have to build cars to make a profit to go out there and do the other things even if you think the future is FSD 
you have to sell the cars to then install FSD on. You can't install FSD on another car, right? It's Tesla only, and you are supposed to be paying good money for it, right? Tesla full self-driving is going to save lives if you pay is the business plan. Well, at the moment, nobody seems to be paying. Anyway, I'm going to cut the video here because I have been going on for a little bit, talking through the numbers, the actual sales data that Tesla have experienced, and then looking in a bit of detail as to why it's bad. The next part is how do we fix this? And I genuinely have some ideas about how we can fix this. But before we get to that, put in the comments, what do you think? What are your ideas about how we can turn this thing around? How, putting it bluntly, in part two, can we make Tesla great again? And if you want to watch that, make sure you've liked and subscribed so that you know when that one drops. And I will see you back here very soon on Just Get a Tesla.